show me the next step dangling out from an electric train and being hit by the trackside electric post. A week earlier, I read in the daily about the clashes between the students of two city colleges which resulted in the death of a youth. These and other instances of mindless heroics, violence and crimes involving youth tell us about a new generation, a use of a new generation under severe peer pressure to excel in something and catch attention. These are also indications of an new generation who have set wrong priorities for themselves. The consumerist culture, initiated by the penetration of the social media, constantly harass our youth and render them incapable of setting their life's priorities right. Setting the priority right is a secret for a successful life. Discerning God's purpose in your life is a secret to set your priorities right. Today is Eve Sunday. Youth in search of meaningful life is a certain thing to understand. In the Old Testament reading set before us, an answer who is constantly on a search for a meaningful life. It is Joseph, the son of Jacob whose colorful and eventful story unfolds from Genesis 7 to 15. Joseph's lofty search for a meaningful life, raising success and status in his life, it also brings upon him suffering and humiliation. The standard for good and bad that one sets differs from person to person. But in fact, that standard for good and bad that one person sets sets that person apart as either a good person or a bad person. Even as a whole, the standards that Joseph set for himself was so high than his other brothers. What was the normal fun in the heroin life of the wilderness seemed evil for Jacob or Joseph, as we find in Genesis chapter 37, verse 2. Because Joseph set for himself high moral standards. We may see how the high moral standard that Joseph set for himself saved his life during his days in Egypt. Setting high moral standards go a long way in setting your priorities right. And setting your priorities right will set you on a path for a meaningful life. Setting high moral standards go a long way in setting your priorities now. And setting your priorities right will set you on a path for a meaningful life. However, high standards of right and wrong will not always bring success and happiness into our lives. We live in a world of inverted moralism and perverted values, the values which our forefathers held high seem meaningless nowadays. And what they, our forefathers, considered objectionable 
have been announced for the next generation. We are constantly expected to compromise on our standards of good and bad, bad on our moral, ethical standards. Words like being friendly, being updated, sinking, or chilling with these are all the new liberal terminologies constantly enticing our youngsters to compromise the levels of morality and ethics. Whenever you are called to update yourself, just check and see whether you need to lower your moral standards to certain levels. Whenever you are called to sing a joke or something, just evaluate whom are you sleeping with or to what values are you children? These are all the enticement of liberal civilization to encourage us to compromise our moral and ethical standards. Joseph, Joseph could not simply do that. He could, he could not sink to the level of his brothers. He could not jump with his elder brothers. And his moral standards brought upon him trouble again and again. He was put in a pit in the wilderness. He was sold as a slave. He was put in a prison. Was Joseph bitter on all these? Troublesome experiences that he had to go through in his life. It is all these chapters from 37 to 50. There is no mention of how Joseph felt about his experiences, but we only have a record of how Joseph lived his life. The way one lives, part of his life, is often determined by the outlook that he or she has on her life. And their outlook is determined by discerning the purpose for one's life. Your outlook for life is determined by discerning the purpose you have for your life. During one of my previous stationing, that used to come to our page every morning. A garbage collector, an young person, an young garbage collector from the municipality. Though the work that he was doing involves food and nauseating, he had a warm, broad smile on his face. Whenever he sees any elder coming out of the house, he used to respectfully wish and smile back at them. And he used to playfully greet the children when they come across him. Even as he handed over the garbage back to him in the morning, his broad smile warms up your heart till the day. day. He is a great example of a positive outlook in life. The outlook that Jesus had about his life is something remarkable. He was a child of life for Jacob, and his favorite, favorite wife among his wives, a favorite wife, Rachel, as we find in Genesis 30 and 37. By the vengeance of his brothers, brothers he was ripped away from his loving parents and home. He was sold as a slave in a foreign land. He fell upon every misfortune of his life. It seemed that God himself has left in God. At the beginning of chapter 39, Genesis chapter 39, he is standing in a slave market in Egypt. At the end of the chapter, he is in the prison. He is thrown in the prison. In between, he had been a very beautiful slave. Coming to the dedicated to his master and was very loyal to the faith that his master had reposed upon him. Due to some 
first allegation was thrown into prison. But he had every right to be bitter upon God for the experiences that he had been going through for being good. Only the author of Genesis was telling us again and again that God was with him. But misfortunes are misfortune fell upon his life, and he had every right to ask, as Gideon had asked the angel in Judges 6 13. God said, If only had God been with me, why all this are happening to me? Surprisingly, Joseph was not bitter on God, neither did he despair. Whatever, wherever Joseph was placed, whatever was his condition, Joseph committed himself with full and total dedication and accomplished his duties loyally. His accomplishments were beyond the expectation of his masters because he was not only going through his duties, but he was accomplishing his responsibilities according to his own higher standard that he set for himself. Joseph set himself very high working ethics and professional standards. Another important observation that we have to look here is even though misfortunes fell upon him, Joseph knew that he never compromised on his moral, ethical, spiritual or professional standards. This is because of Joseph's discernment that God was working through him wherever he was. Whether he was in the prison, as we find in chapter 40, verse 8, he was telling his co prison revealing the dream, is God's work. Allow God to work on it. Let me listen to your dream. Or whether he was at a palace before Pharaoh, he was telling the same. It's God's work to reveal your dream. Allow God to work. Let me listen to your dreams. Whether he was in prison or at the palace, Joseph never doubted that God was at work in and through him. God was at work in and through him. His words reveals a realization that if God has to work in this particular situation, I am the channel for God's intervention. If God has to work here in this situation, I am the child of God. I am the channel for God's intervention. And that's why, whether he was at the palace or he was thrown into prison, Joseph lived his life as if he was living his life for God. Joseph lived his life as if he was living his life for God. This only God's purpose when you are advancing in your life or when you are successful is very easy and comfortable. However, when you are down in dumps, when you suffer reverses in your life for no fault of yours, when you are victimized for the moral standards, moral stand that you are taken, can be realized in those circumstances when we are persecuted and humiliated for righteousness' sake, then we are still the agents of God at work. Joseph had that belief in his life. Whether he was elevated, whether he was dumped, whether he was successful, or whether he was in a prison, he always had a faith that he was being an agent of God. Anywhere and everywhere, God to him. Discerning the purpose of God in every turn of your life, whether in success or in failure, needs a spiritual strength, a moral strength. And also, it needs a conviction that you are a child of God and God is working through you. Discerning the purpose of God in every turn of your life. Needs a spiritual strength and a direction that 
do on the China level. This realization that whatever happened in his life, a bad one in his life took him in a little prison out of the palace, that the purpose of God is played out in his life. That saved him from a lot of bitterness, that saved him from feeling despair. Not only that, and more importantly, because he had the belief that the focus of God is playing out in his mind, wherever he was. It prevented Joseph from taking revenge upon those who wronged him in his past life. It is important to note that he lived his life fully with commitment, whether as a slave or as a governor of provinces. Upon his elevation to become the governor of all provinces, he realized that God was preparing him through all these trials and tribulations, through all these persecutions and humiliations, to this elevation. God was preparing him to this. And he also had an increasing realization that God had elevated him not for his own glory, but to be an agent of God's life to millions of people and to save their lives. As we see in Genesis chapter 45, uh, uh, 5 and 5 words, and uh, chapter 15, verse 20. In every misfortune, was able to see God's hand working to him. It is an important lesson to learn from Joseph that if you are determined to be an instrument of God, if you are determined to be an instrument of God, even the evil God against you will advance God's plan for your future. Even the evil that is God against you will advance what God can or for your future. Joseph was a youth in search of meaningful life. He had a high moral standards. He had a high dreams. He was a person of high dreams. And matching his high dreams, he set his moral, ethical, spiritual, uh, professional standards very high. He did not despair upon his misfortune because he knew that he never compromised on his moral and ethical standards. He was able to maintain a positive outlook on life because he realized that God was working in and through him in every situation that he is faced. My dear friends, setting priorities right is a secret for a successful life. And this only God's purpose for your life is a secret to set your priorities right. Your priorities in life right. Setting your high moral standards go a long way in setting your priorities right. And if, if you set your life priorities right, then you are a path for a meaningful life. The way one will please her or this life is often determined by their outlook, and their outlook is determined by the purpose of their lives. This is the purpose of God in every turn of your life, whether in success or in failure. God is suffering the worst for no fault of yours. It needs a spiritual strength and a conviction that you are a child of God. It is an important lesson to learn from Jesus, from Joseph, that if you are determined to be an instrument of God, even the evil that is brought against you will advance. God's plan for your life. May God help you to be in search for the meaningful life.